In this video, we solve problem 7.2.17-T from Essentials of Statistics, sixth edition by Mario Triola. The problem statement says, in a study of speed dating, male, male subjects, excuse me, were asked to rate the attractiveness of their female dates and a sample of results is listed below. One is equal to not attractive and 10 is extremely attractive. They're asked to rate their dates on a scale of one to 10. We're asked to construct a confidence interval using a 99% confidence level. And then we're asked, what do the results tell us about the mean attractiveness ratings of the population of all adult females? In order to solve this, I'm going to show you my paper, but I think I'll also use Excel to compute the sample mean and the sample standard deviation. So here's my paper. Now we're asked to construct a confidence interval using that 99% confidence level. And so I've written down the formula for the um, confidence interval for a population mean. So we know that the population mean is between the sample mean minus the error and the sample mean plus the error, where error is given by this formula. And this is in the case when the standard deviation of the population is not known. Since we don't know that population standard deviation, we have to use the student t distribution in, when, in our calculations of um, the margin of error. Now, so we've got our critical t value from the appropriate um, t distribution. We're going to multiply by the uh, standard deviation of the sample data that we have right here. And then we'll divide by the square root of the sample size and to um, account for um, the sample size we need the appropriate degrees of freedom for that student t distribution okay so in order to use or in order to do this in order to compute this over here i need x bar which i can find easily i'll just add these together and divide by the sample size i've already written down n equals 12 i just got that from counting these i've got four here four more there and four there. So I've got n equals 12. I also need to find the sample standard deviation. We could do that by hand, but I think I'm going to use Excel this time. And we're told that we have a 99% confidence level. Remember alpha is the complement of that, but in decimal form. So alpha would be 1%, but in decimal form, that's 0.01. And the number of degrees of freedom is the sample size minus one. So it's 12 minus one, or in this case, 11. So these two pieces of information together will allow us to find that um, critical T value. Now remember the alpha value when you're when you're using um, when you're computing confidence intervals, the alpha value tells you the area in two tails. So I want the area in two tails to be given by this value, and I want um, 11 degrees of freedom. So if I go to that tear out sheet of formulas and tables um, by Mr. Triola, I can find the critical T values associated with this. So I always like to draw a distribution. This time it's not a normal distribution, but we're thinking of this as a particular uh, T distribution where we've got um, 12 degrees or 12 minus one, uh, 11 degrees of freedom. And we want 99% um, of that area to be in the middle. So 99% of the area is here. And so the area in two tails is a half a percentage over here and a half a percentage over here. That half a percentage and a half a percentage gives me that 1% as the area in two tails. So the question is, what is the T value right there? That's my T sub alpha over two. In order to find that, I will um, use that table from Mr. Triola. So to find that explicitly, I'll share my screen with you. Here's my table, formulas and tables. So I'm looking for table A3. There it is, T distribution, critical T values. So in this, uh, column right here, I look for the number of degrees of freedom. 
So I've got 11 degrees of freedom. So these are the critical T values. And since I'm looking at a 99% confidence interval, I want 99% of the area in the middle. That means I want 1% of the area and two tails. So I want the area and two tails to be 0 0.01. So that's in this column. So I go here and I go to 11 degrees of freedom and I see that my um, critical T value is 3.1. Zero six. Okay, so I've got this uh, critical T value. Now we could use Excel to find that value as well, but since we had the exact number of degrees of freedom and the exact alpha, I think I'll just use the one from the table because Excel is going to tell me the same thing. So I've got that. And um, the only thing I need over here now is the sample standard deviation and the sample mean. Well, actually, I think I will compute this in Excel because I'm going to use Excel for um, X bar sample mean and the sample standard deviation as well. So let me show you how to do that in Excel. Go back to sharing my screen. Oh, actually, sorry, I don't want to do that yet. Let's go to the homework. <clears throat> so here's the homework um, associated. This is the problem associated with this question on my sheet. So I'll go here, click that little icon, and it gives you an option to open in Excel. So we'll open it in Excel. And there it is. There are those ratings. Okay, now we need the sample mean. So I'll just say the sample mean is equal to this. It's the sum of, well, you could take the sum or you could just have Excel compute the average for you. They use average rather than mean, but we know that they mean the same thing. So the sample mean turns out to be 6.75. And if we want the sample standard deviation, The function in Excel is S T for standard deviation. And then you've got standard deviation of a sample and standard deviation of a population. That's what that P represents and the S represents. This is a sample. So we want that formula and we want this to be our sample. So we get that sample standard deviation. So X bar is 6.75. I'm just going to write that down. And the sample standard deviation is 2.137331 and so on. Now I could compute my error right here. I'm going to show you how to compute the error, the margin of error on my sheet of paper, and then I'll show you how to compute it in Excel. You're going to get the same answer either way. So We've got this formula here and we already know what our critical T value is. So we'll just substitute that in. T equals 3.106. The sample standard deviation is that number. We just found that using Excel. And then we're going to divide by the square root of the sample size. So I'll use my calculator for this. And that's giving me my error, margin of error of approximately 1.91638 and so on. Let me show you how to do that in Excel. It's gonna be exactly the same thing. You're just having a Excel do it for you. So the error, margin of error is this, it's equal to um, that T value. And actually this time, I'd let, let me find the critical T value. In order to get the T value, I would type equals T dot inverse. And I want the one that has the two T after it. So it's T dot INV dot two T for two tails, open parentheses. And they're gonna want the area in the two tails. 
which is 1%, so 0 0.01. And we've got degrees of freedom equal to the sample size minus one, so that's 11. And we get that T value. Notice that it's the same T value that I had um, from table A3. Okay, so my margin of error, I've been calling it error, but I really should be calling it the margin of error. Technically a little bit different. The margin of error is equal to the critical T value times the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size and the sample size we just counted ourselves that was 12 and we get a margin of error of that value. So the upper limit um, for our confidence interval is X bar, so the sample mean plus the error. And the lower limit is equal to X bar minus the error. And so using Excel, I'm writing this down over here on my paper. And we were asked to round to one decimal place. The lower limit for the mean is 4.8 and the upper limit for the mean is approximately 8.7. Now, if I'm not using Excel, but I'm using hand calculations, I want to add and subtract this error from that mean to get the upper and lower limits. So I've got 6.75 plus 1.916 approximately, and then 6.75 minus 1.916. And I don't need those extra decimal places because I'm about to round to one decimal place. So this is approximately 8.67. Uh, and then this one is approximately uh, 4.83. So the upper bound is 8.7 approximately and the lower bound is 4.8, which is the same thing that we got using Excel. So let's go back to the homework. Oops. We'll stay on the page. We'll enter that 4.8 as our lower limit and our upper limit of 8.7. Okay, great. And then the question says, what do the results tell us about the mean attractiveness ratings of the population of all adult females? As well, Parday says we're 99% confident that all adult females have attractiveness ratings between that value and that other value. That's not the interpretation. Um, here's B, I think this is the correct uh, interpretation. We are 99% confident that the interval from 4.8 to 8.7 contains, it actually contains the true mean attractiveness of all adult females. So we don't know what the true mean attractiveness is, but we're 99% confident that the true mean attractiveness lies between 4.8 and 8.7. That's what that confidence interval means. And part C says the results tell us nothing about the population because participate, participants in speed dating are not a representative sample of the population of all adult females. Hmm, that's true. I wonder if that's the answer that they're looking for. Yeah, participants in speed dating are not necessarily a representative sample. I think I'm gonna go with C. Um, if it was a simple random sample, I would have gone with B, but I think I'm gonna go with C. All right, um, they made a very good point there. If I wasn't reading the uh, problem statement very carefully, I, I would have chosen B, but um, they're, they're right. A speed dating sample of women is not um, a simple random sample of women.